Hey everyone, it's Desiree, and for today's project, I am going to work with a layering stencil by Pink and Main. It's called the Rose Garden Set. Um, so this layering stencil has three stencils to it. You've got the flower, and then the leaves, and then these little flowers that will surround it. So, it's funny. I was looking at this, trying to line them up, see how they go, but it took me a while. Um, didn't realize that they have this awesome feature with that little tiny rectangle um, to make sure that you line that up. As long as you line that rectangle up for each of the stencils, that's how the layering will go. So I'm going to place my four and a quarter by five and a half panel onto the first stencil and that's going to be the flower so once i know i have it in the position that i'm looking for because i don't want to show the rectangle i will use my tape to set that in place you can see the inks that i'm going to use are the new concord and ninth um, dye inks that have recently been released and you can see the colors that i have up there i'm also going to be using the pink and main ergonomic blender brushes the first color that i'm going to use is aqua sky and i'm going to use the larger size of the ergonomic blending brushes um, what i have found uh, with these blender brushes is they are very comfortable um, i find i do hold them like i do our original blending tools that we all started with and will I at least I continue to use them and those are the Ranger ink blending tools um, they are comfortable though when you grab them by the top handle and then of course they come in this little size as well that I just think is absolutely adorable I'm then going to come in with one of my makeup brushes so when the makeup when the blending brushes came out onto the scene they had those really different um, brush you know brush sizes as well you know the skinny ones and the this little small one here so I'm finding ways to use them I think they're great for details um, just what details we're not sure but we're gonna figure it out um, so I'm using that for the center of the flowers and I'm using Oceanside for that color when I clean my bl uh, blending brushes whether it's the makeup ones that I have or the pink and main blending brushes I use a dry cloth after a while or every so often I will use an extremely damp baby wipe just to get more ink off so the next color I'm going to use after I line up this stencil and get that cardstock adhered back on there is going to be sea glass and that's going to be for the leaves now sometimes when we think of sea glass um, we see a blue tint um, this one's got more of a green tint uh, to it and sea glass can it can either have that blue tint dominant or a green tint dominant so I am using the smaller of the blending brushes for this one just so that I know that I can get into those areas and to see how this works you know to see how they work with this as well i think the blending brushes work very well on stencils um i think they're more gentle onto a stencil rather than the ranger ink tool because you've got that foam that foam can get caught onto some of the stencils that have maybe a lot of points um, or a lot of areas that are very tiny or if the stencil in some places is separated I think the stencils are more user-friendly or excuse me the blending brushes are more user-friendly I'm sticking with the sea glass I was going to use the parsley but honestly I forgot to open it up so we're going to continue with the sea glass obviously here and I'm using my small makeup brush and I'm just adding a little bit of shading down from the base of the leaf um, just pulling up not being exact um, but just pulling that up through just to give it a little bit of a darker shade um, 
when it comes to now you have to remember when it comes to these inks they are not a felt pad they are what I'm going to refer to like a sponge pad um, so if you press down on it with your stamp the entire stamp will be inked literally um, even the base below the raised area so there is a learning curve with them um, I am a fan of that type of pad though um, because the Stampin' Up ink pads are like that. Um, Stampin' Up were the first inks um, that I had, and I do enjoy them. Um, I think they are very good ink. Um, I just don't like the ink packaging. I'm not a fan of the way the ink pads are packaged, whether old or new. Um, I like the concept, but just not the style of the, the packaging. I also... Um, wanted to see, you know, again, when it comes to the felt with the blender brushes, it's a different feel. You think you get, you do get a little bit more ink, um, but I did not have, I was curious to know with the sponge pad, would they work the same? Would they operate? And would I get the same amount of ink? And I am not seeing any difference, um, which I think is fantastic. I think the color palette that Concord and Ninth um, developed is absolutely gorgeous and I look forward um, to them continuing. So here is our panel. We used grapefruit for the last one and I did not do any shading with that. I kept that just a solid color. I will pull in my heat tool just to dry this um, a little bit and these colors do um, just like with most of our inks, when these colors do dry, they do dry back just a little bit. Um, so this looks bold and vibrant right now. Um, it will soften itself. I grabbed a piece of the Sprout cardstock by Concord and Ninth, and I'm using the Reverse Scalloped Rectangle Die by Pink and Main. And I'm going to tape this piece of cardstock to it. And I now have this frame that I'm going to set around my panel. I'm going to use an extensive amount of double-sided foam strips and squares. Yeah, and I'm going to set that down on my panel. Don't, never worry, if you don't get it straight, just make sure you trim it um, with your scissors. And nobody will ever know that it is not a perfect panel. It's all good. Now, you can add jewels to the center of these flowers. You can add sequins um, in the areas that are open in these flowers. You could add some accents to the little peach flowers. Um, there's so much you can do with that stencil, but it does create an absolutely beautiful background um, for any of your cards. I use the Pink and Main Hello Dyes set, so it creates a what I call a cloud in the back and I used vellum for that and then for the word itself hello I used black cardstock I did cut that three times just to give that some dimension <clears throat> I will adhere that down to the base of this card and I will get my standard A2 size card base ready um, it is cut four and a quarter by eleven and I will score it at five and a half this will be a top folding card Using my liquid adhesive, I will put that down onto my card base and it will cover the front. So it is four and a quarter by five and a half. I will come in with my uh, Spectrum Noir Clear Sparkle just to add a little bit of shimmer to the sentiment. You could also go um, forward and use your glossy accents or another clear um, liquid on top of that just to give it more dimension. So I do hope you enjoyed today's project. I hope I gave you some tips and tricks, whether it was for layering stencils or the blending brushes or maybe the Concord and Ninth dye inks. Um, but in any way, I do hope that you enjoyed it. All the products that I used will be listed down below in the video description. Um, please make sure you click on those in case you're interested in learning more about any of them. If you have any questions, make sure you leave those down in the comments and I will make sure I get back to you as soon as I can. If you haven't already, I'd love for you to subscribe, be part of the group, and make sure you ring the bell so that you know when the next video is ready for you to be, to be viewed. Yeah, that's what I was trying to say. 
I hope everyone is having a great day. Thank you so much for spending this little bit of time with me. Continue to stay safe and healthy, but always remember what's also important. Always be creative. Till next time, guys. Thanks.